Welcome to this lecture on general equations of a transmission line. Here we would like to derive the equation of voltage and current at any point on the transmission line. This volt transmission line is supplied with a voltage source which would supply voltage Vs and as an internal resistance Zs. On the right side of the transmission line, we have a load which is having an impedance Zl. The transmission line is an interconnection of T networks, infinite number of T networks. This T network has a series arm which is having an impedance Z and the shunt admittance Y. The series impedance Z is a combination of resistance R and inductance L and the shunt admittance Y is the combination of conductance G and capacitance C. For our analysis, this integral element del X would be taken for solving the equations. When you consider the equation from the source end, we have the reference axis as x and when you have the voltage and current measured from the load end, we have the reference axis as L and both these axes are opposite in direction. R the series resistance, L the series inductance, C the capacitance between these two parallel conductors and G, the shunt leakage conductance between conductor. Omega L gives the series reactance and the impedance Z is the combination of R and Omega L and the shunt admittance is the combination of G and Omega C which is the shunt susceptance. L being the distance to the point of observation measured from load. I of X is the current on the line measured at any point from the source end and V of X is the voltage at any point on the line measured from the source and omega being the angular frequency of the traveling wave of the voltage and the current. The del V and del I are the decremental voltage and current. So this output voltage of the transmission line would be decremented by the amount del V and del I from the initial amount Vs and Is. Since it is decreasing, we mention it with a negative sign on the other end. By Ohm's law, we know that V is equal to Ri. Here the resistance is an impedance R plus J omega L over the integral element of length del x into i. Similarly, the decrementing current del i is negative of g plus j omega c del x times v. r plus j omega l can be mentioned as z for our convenience and we have taken del x to the left side of the equation and made it as del V by del X is equal to negative of impedance time the current I. As this decrement incremental element, small integral element del X tends to zero, it becomes a differential or very infinitesimally small element. So it becomes dV by dx is equal to minus zi. Similarly, from equation two, del I is equal to g plus j omega c is being replaced as y and the del x component being taken to the other side of the expression and the del x integral component tending towards 0 becomes a differential element and it becomes di by dx is equal to negative of y times v. y is nothing but the shunt admittance which gives us the equation 4. Differentiating equation 3 and 4 yields us Second order differentiation of voltage over x is minus z times the current gradient and the second order differentiation of current is minus y times the voltage gradient. In equation 5, we substitute the current gradient equation from 4 and it becomes z y times the voltage v. So negative sign is being eliminated as a case of minus getting multiplied with minus. So the second order differentiation of voltage becomes gamma square times V. The variable gamma square is nothing but the product of the series impedance Z and the shunt admittance Y. 
the propagation constant would be actually the square root of the product z and y which is nothing but square root of r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c the propagation constant speaks about how a voltage wave or a current wave as it propagates along the transmission line from the source to the load gets attenuated in terms of magnitude and gets delayed in terms of phase equation 7 can be written as d square by dx square minus gamma square times v is equal to 0 in this we assume d by dx square as m variable and gamma square we know it is the product of the series impedance z and the shunt admittance y so the solution is either v is equal to 0 or this m square minus z y is equal to 0 we take the case m square minus z y which gives you m is equal to plus or minus square root of z y or plus or minus gamma the voltage which is getting transmitted from the source moves along the transmission line and gets absorbed by the load if it is not getting fully absorbed by the load a part of it would be reflected back to the source so we denote v plus as the forward traveling wave which is getting moved along the transmission line from the source and v minus as the reflected wave which gets reflected back from the load the voltage decays along the transmission line as we move from the source so the voltage v of x is nothing but v plus times e power minus gamma x and the reflected wave is v minus e power plus gamma x so equation 9 gives us the voltage at any point on the transmission line as we move from the source towards the load if we measure the voltage at any point as we move from the load towards the source just replace x with minus l in equation number 9 so we get voltage at any point v of l from the load end as v plus e power plus gamma l plus v minus e power minus gamma l note that equation 9 and equation 10 differs by the change of sign in the exponential term if you want to measure the voltage at any point on a transmission line at any instant of time t we just multiply the expression v of l in the previous equation with e power j omega t and since this gamma which is coming is a complex value we can express it as v of l comma t as v plus into e power plus alpha l which speaks about the magnitude of the forward, forward traveling wave and the term e power j omega t plus beta l speaks about the phase of the forward traveling wave similar holds for the backward traveling wave as well a similar kind of expression uh, simplification can be done with the current equation and we can get the expression of current at any point of the transmission line equation 12 gives us the current measured at any point from the load end and the equation 13 speaks about the current measured at any point from the source end equation 14 and 15 gives the general equation measuring voltage and current at any point on the transmission line providing general solution for it is finding values v plus v minus i plus and i minus which means we have to solve four unknowns we have only two equations which would make it impossible we have to create four equations to solve this four unknowns so first two equations we are going to generate by assuming the current and voltage measured at the load end since it is measured at the load end the reference l is zero and the voltage v of l measured would become the voltage across the load and the current i l measured would be the current across the load i l so the equation 14 and 15 simplifies to be v plus plus v minus and i of l simplifies to be i plus and 
i minus. To get another set of two equations, we take equation 14 and 15, differentiate it and proceed further. So differentiating all 14 and 15, we get dv of dv by dl and di by dl. We have earlier derived the voltage gradient in equation 3 and current gradient from equation 4. So equating this voltage gradient expressions dv by dl will give you the equation 18 and the equating equa uh, current gradient di by dl will give you the expression 19. Substituting gamma is equal to square root of z y in equation 18 and 19 and rearranging it we get the voltage expression and the current expression modified. Now, to get the second set of two equations, we consider it again from the load end. That is, L is equal to 0, voltage measured V becomes VL, the current measured I becomes IL. So, the expression simplifies to V, IL is equal to I plus square root of Y by Z minus I minus square root of Y by Z. And the voltage VL becomes V plus square root of Z by Y minus v minus square root of z by y. Solving equation 17 and 20 will give you the values of i plus and i minus. And solving equations 16 and 21, we will be getting the values of v plus and v minus. For simplification, take z is equal to vl by il and z naught is equal to square root of z by y for simplification. So V plus reduce it to be VL by 2, 1 plus Z naught by ZL and V minus becomes VL by 2, 1 minus Z naught by ZL, just the change of sign. And similarly, I plus becomes IL by 2, 1 plus ZL by Z naught and I minus, which is having just the change of sign, minus. Substituting the values of I plus and I minus and V plus and V minus which we have got in equation 14 and 15 which is the general equation of the transmission line gives you the voltage measured at any point on the transmission line given by the equation 22 and current measured at any point on the transmission line by equation 23. Further simplification can be done by taking LCM and the voltage expression becomes the VL times ZL plus Z0 by 2ZL into E power gamma L plus ZL minus Z0 by ZL plus Z0 E power minus gamma L. Similarly, to get the current equation from 23 equation, you can take LCM ZL and take the term ZL plus Z0 by Z0 common outside. So it reduces out to be equation 25. So this gives you the general solution of a transmission line. Equation 24 and 25 can be used to measure voltage and current at any point on the transmission line. Thank you.